Hello everyone, welcome to Science Non Science. I'm Prasanna Deshmukh, and in today's episode, we will discuss about Bode Titus law, and before that, we will also discuss about Kepler's law. So let's get started. So Johannes Kepler was a German astronomer, mathematician, and astrologer, and he was a key figure in 17th century scientific revolution, uh, best known for his laws of planetary motions and also for several of his books. Kepler gave three laws of planetary motions in astronomy and classical physics. These laws describes the motion of planet in solar system. They were derived by German astronomer Johannes Kepler, whose analysis of the observations of 16th century Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe enabled him to announce his first two laws in 1609 and the third law nearly decade later in 1618. And we'll give some more focus on this third law. Now, this is most widely circulated solar system picture in which you can see our sun on the left hand side and the planet Mercury, Venus, Earth. And when you see this, you feel like, oh, maybe all these planets are kind of equal, equidistant from each other and at this uh, equal distance uh, from the sun as well. Uh, but that is not the case. They orbit at widely different orbits and one of the outcome of these laws is to predict how much is the distance from the period of these objects going around the sun or vice versa. So here are the three laws of planetary motion by Kepler. The first law states that all the planets move around the sun in an elliptical orbit, not circular orbit, and sun acts as it's one of the foci uh, for the ellipse. Now, a radius vector joining any planet to the sun sweeps equal areas in equal lengths of time. I'll come to that in the next slide. And third law says that the squares of sidereal periods of revolution of planets are directly proportional to the cubes of the mean distance from the sun. What does it mean? We'll see with the example in coming time. So here is a nice depiction of Kepler's first law in which you can see the focus of these two ellipses acts as uh, one of the foci of the ellipse and two planets, planet number one and planet number two are going around the sun, around the F1 point in an elliptical orbit. Okay, so this is the first law. The second law state that the radius vector, which is like a vector joining the planet and the sun over here, Okay, that sweeps equal area in equal interval of time. What does it mean? In other words is, you see this blue color area at every delta T, which is shown by these sectors, is having same amount of area represented by this blue curve. And what does it indicate is that when the planet is further away from the sun, it will move slowly, whereas when it comes close to its focus, then it will start moving faster so as to sweep equal amount of areas. So that is the second law. And what is the third law? Does this image tell us anything about the third law? Not directly, but let's see in number. So this is a chart indicating different planets, as you can see from Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Pluto, of course, he is not a planet now, but we can still keep in this uh, list for the calculation purpose. Here are the radius, known radius of these planets. These are the mean radius. And here are the lengths of the relative years of the planets, or basically how much time it takes for these planets to go around the sun as compared to Earth's duration. So if you consider Earth, it takes one year. Now in comparison to one year, how much it takes so that is given by these two numbers. Now the beauty of this is, if you have these planets, if you take the cube of the radius, whatever the radius distance is, the mean radius which I show, if you take the cube of that, and if you take the square of the time required for planets to go around the sun, these two numbers, the ratio of these two numbers is roughly or approximately equal to 1 and that can be shown here as you can see this is a t squared by r cube is always equal to 1 now if we had exact numbers of these uh, r values mean distances 
then this will be always equal to 1. So in summary, the square of the duration of the planet's time required to go around the sun is proportional to the cube of radius of the mean radius of the sun. Now whatever laws we see for the Kepler's law are exact and they can be derived by using Newton's laws of motions of the body. Whereas there is another law uh, connected to the planets and it is called as Bode's law. It was called as Bode law because it was most popularized by Bode but uh, it was actually discovered by Titus. So hence it is also known as Bode Titus law or Titus Bode law. This formula gives us the orbital radius of the planet. How? Let's see. Now in order to use this law you don't need any physics or any complicated maths to understand and what you have to do is take the series of numbers as shown here you have 0 1 2 every time you are doubling the number so 0 1 2 4 8 into 2 is 16 into 2 is 32 64 128 and 256 now what you have to do is simply multiply all these numbers by 0 0.3 what you get is 0 0.3 point 0.6 1.2 is basically just multiplying each of these numbers by point 0.3 now going further what you have to do is add point 0.4 to these numbers so when you do that it comes out to be point 0.4 point 0.7 1 16 do you find any pattern in this let's see so these are the numbers which we derived from the body titus law on top and these are the actual distances of the planets or these are the actual orbital radius of the planets around the sun and if you compare them they closely match for mercury the difference is slightly less the venus as you can see earth of course it matches with the earth for mars it is very close there is extra number here from the titus body law whereas in our planetary system we don't have any planet over here i'll come to that again and then you have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus. The only problem with this particular uh, Titus body law is it does not predict the Neptune, but it does predicts the Pluto's orbit. Now here, as you can see, these are the numbers in comparison to the Sun Earth distance, which is one astronomical unit. So if you want to convert these distances into kilometers, you can do by using this. So what is the beauty of this particular law is by just having these numbers, you can tell approximate distances of all the planets in our solar system in terms of astronomical units which is this or if you just multiply it with this constant then you get the distance in kilometers so as i told before that as beautiful this law is it is not having any scientific explanation or it cannot be proved by any physics uh, law and in April 2004, a planet-like object of approximately 1000 km in diameter was identified in our solar system. Its distance is now approximately 86 astronomical unit, not far from the figure of 77 astronomical unit predicted by Bode Titus law. Now, its orbit is quite eccentric, so its distance from Sun may range from 75 AU to 1000 AU over the course of 10,000 earth years of revolution about the sun. If an explanation were to exist for Bode Titus law, it can be related with the radius zone in which there cannot be any formation of planet uh, due to the gravitational attractions of the planets nearby. There is such a zone for planet within which a satellite cannot form due to the gravitational attraction of the planet itself. Uh, this zone is also called as Roche limit. Now, incidentally, the formula analogous to Bode Titus law also exists for other planets' satellites, such as Jupiter satellite, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune satellite. So, if you want to know more about that, you can see this link and where you can actually see how these formulas are applied. Now, before I go to the end, I had told you that there is a predicted planet within our Mars and Jupiter, whereas actually we don't have a planet in the orbit of Mars and Jupiter and that is related to the asteroid belt wherein you have lots of asteroids in between Mars and Jupiter if you combine them together together it may act as a planet or can be an object 
whose orbit can be predicted by the Bode Titus law. Now that is just a coincidence, but it's beautiful. So these are the references. If you want to learn more about uh, these laws, you can go to these references. I'll give the links in the description. So if you like this video, don't forget to share it with your friends, comment if you have any queries or suggestions. And so we make similar videos. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel, Science Non-Science. I'll see you in the next video.